Hello. In this video, we're going to consider capillary pressure. But more specifically, capillary pressure macroscopically. So if we take a piece of rock like this, and we have two phases present within the rock, there will be a capillary pressure between the two phases, which will be given by the curvature of the menisci between the phases. But if we have a piece of rock and we're at capillary equilibrium, we'd expect that capillary pressure to be the same throughout the rock. But as displacement proceeds, for instance, imagine a rock full of water and I put more and more oil in the, to the pore space, the oil will push itself more and more in to the rock the water saturation will decrease, the oil saturation will increase, but the capillary pressure will also change. And so what we're talking about here is not the capillary pressure at the microscopic level across a meniscus, but the average pressure difference between two phases at the macro scale as one phase displaces another and as there is a change in saturation. So it's essentially capillary pressure as a function of saturation. So I'm showing here a macroscopic plot of capillary pressure as a function of saturation, where we see primary drainage, then water injection, and then oil reinjection. And I've labeled those curves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through those curves in detail and to explain essentially the capillary pressure saturation relationship. But I'm going to do this actually on the whiteboard. So here we have the whiteboard. I'm going to start as I did in this diagram by showing the capillary pressure as a function of saturation. So here on this axis is going to be capillary pressure. So that's my capillary pressure. I'm going to have a zero value here. And on this axis is going to be the water saturation, S, W, and this will be a value of one. Okay. And the capillary pressure, if we're looking at an oil water system, is traditionally considered the pressure in the oil minus the pressure in the water. So we're going to start by considering primary drainage. So I'm going to show that in red. So in primary drainage, we start with a rock that's entirely saturated with water. And then I inject oil. We've already discussed this. This is a, an invasion percolation process. Okay. What happens is the oil, first of all, will enter the widest throats at the inlet, and then we'll find a path, a connected pathway of the widest throats through the system. In an infinite system, actually, the non-wetting phase will be able to find this pathway of throats at an almost infinitesimal change in saturation. And so what we find here is that there is a critical pressure at which the oil can first span through the system with relatively little change in saturation. In a finite size system, you might see an apparent shift, but this here, is my entry pressure. And it's basically related to a two sigma cos theta divided by some critical radius. And this is the radius of the narrowest throat through which I have to go through in order to span the system. It's not the widest throat on the inlet because that in a very large piece of rock has very little change in the behavior. It's when you first span the system. Then what happens is now the oil is throughout the system in this percolation 
like behavior. And it then starts filling progressively smaller and smaller throats. The pores, which are the wide regions, of course, it fills those automatically because they, that can happen at a lower pressure. So macroscopically, what we measure is a capillary pressure that then rapidly changes because we're filling the larger regions of the pore space. Okay. Then eventually we start filling narrow and narrow regions of the pore space. And so we get a capillary pressure that looks like this. We fill the wide regions of the pore space first, then progressively narrow and narrow regions. And eventually we're just forcing water into the corners, the crevices of the pore space with very tiny menisci. The magnitude of the capillary pressure is given by a typical magnitude of the radius of the pores and throats through which the oil has to go. So just to give an order of magnitude, just, just so that we have something to play with here, okay? What is an order of magnitude? An order of magnitude would be two times an interfacial tension, okay? Cosine theta is typically close to one. If we have oil displacing water, initially it's water wet, divided by a typical radius. So just as an example, in this sandstone I've got here, oil water interfacial tensions at ambient conditions is typically 50 millinewtons per litre. So we get two times 50 times 10 to the minus three in strict SI units. A typical pore radius about 10 microns. So that's 10 to the minus five meters. Look at that, that's 100 times 10 to the minus three over 10 to the minus five. So it's, if we look at this in terms of order of magnitude, that's two minus three, so it's minus one plus one. It's about 10 to the four pascals or 10 kilopascals. So typically we're looking at capillary pressures in primary drainage for rocks with permeabilities of a few hundred millidarses in the kilopascal range, right? A few kilopascals. Okay. Eventually, you get to what's called a conate or an irreducible water saturation. You can't normally remove every last drop of water. It will take an infinite pressure because you have to squeeze the water into the corners. And often then the water in the corners isn't connected through the system. So you will normally leave behind some low saturation of water. Okay, so that's your capillary pressure as a function of saturation for primary drainage with some typical numbers. If we're looking at carbonates with millidarcy permeability, pore sizes that are more like a micron or even a submicron scale, the capillary pressure can be much larger. But typically for sandstones, it's going to be less than atmospheric pressure, which is about 100 kilopascals. Okay, now what we do is we're going to consider water flooding. Now, I'm going to look at the general case straight away. So now there's oil in the rock. Imagine we wait for geological time. There will be a wettability alteration. So now the rock is not necessarily uniformly water wet. Imagine a mixed wet rock as the general case. So we get a capillary pressure that's going to look like this. It will have both a positive and a negative region. Okay, so what happens here? The water to begin with will fill the water wet regions of the pore space preferentially because that's at a positive capillary pressure. So here the capillary pressure is positive, here the capillary pressure is negative. What this means is the oil pressure is greater than the water pressure here. Here, the water pressure is greater than the oil pressure. I need to push the water in. So to begin with, you fill the narrow regions of the pore space. But you notice the capillary pressure is lower than it is in primary drainage, right? Why is that? Number of reasons. When you fill in primary drainage, 
The capillary pressure is given by a piston-like advance, two sigma cos theta over r. When you fill in imbibition, to begin with, it's a more percolation process. You fill by snap-off the narrowest throats. The capillary pressure for snap-off, which we've discussed previously, just has a sigma term, and then it has another term here for contact angle. So it's less than half. So to fill a throat in primary drainage, then it gets filled by snap-off. They don't occur at the same capillary pressure. It's less than half. Furthermore, the contact angle itself is not necessarily the same. This is an advancing contact angle. There's been a wettability alteration. We've got a rough surface. We've got chemical heterogeneity. So the capillary pressure here is always lower. Okay. Then this is the water wet region of the pore space. There's also going to be some cooperative pore filling as well. But eventually the capillary pressure reaches zero at a saturation that we call SW star. And then we have to force water in. And this is essentially filling the oil wet regions of the pore space. And we get to a final saturation, one minus SOR, there's a residual oil saturation. So now let's label this. This region, okay, is called spontaneous imbibition. It's an imbibition process, right, where water displaces oil at a positive capillary pressure. The water pressure is actually lower than the oil pressure. This region, okay, sometimes people say it's forced imbibition. No, imbibition is the wetting phase displacing the non-wetting phase. Here, now water becomes the non-wetting phase. Actually, it's technically a drainage process. It's not imbibition. I know lots of people call it forced imbibition or water flooding being imbibition, they're wrong, okay? This is actually a forced displacement. So in order rather not to call it drainage because that would cause some confusion, we call it forced water injection, right? So it's forced, right? The water has to be forced in. Okay. And then what we had here in red, sorry, was primary drainage. Okay, so it's primary drainage, spontaneous imbibition, forced water injection. The final process that we can consider, I showed it in uh, yellow on the board, I'm gonna do it in green because it shows up a bit better here, is when I now do the opposite process, I inject oil. Now, of course, that's not something that you would naturally do, but you get a curve that looks like this. Now, when you inject oil, you're displacing water. Again, you notice that the capillary pressure is always lies above the spontaneous or the forced water injection curve, the water flooding curve. Why is that? Because now you go the other way around. So now we have a receding contact angle, contact angle hysteresis, even without a wettability change, rough surface, chemical heterogeneity, the, the, the receding angle is less than the advancing angle. This gives you a higher capillary pressure. Also, the displacement processes may be different. So here we have the oil that spontaneously imbibes into the rock, but not so much because the contact angles around 90, it may actually, you can have some contact angles around 90 that look non-wetting to water and non-wetting to oil when oil tries to invade. That's due to contact angle hysteresis. So we never quite imbibe back quite so much. We'll call this SWD, all right? And explain why, because this is a secondary drainage process. Here, we're injecting oil as the non-wetting phase to displace water, but it's after primary drainage. So it's the second drainage process. So we call that secondary drainage. And then this one, that's spontaneous imbibition of oil. 
Okay, so that's a schematic of the capillary pressure saturation function that's also shown on the board here. But there's one last thing I'd like to uh, show, and that is a quantification of wettability. So these diagrams all look fine, but often what we do is we do an experiment where we don't necessarily measure these capillary pressures because to do that, we have to inject fluids into a rock, reach steady state, measure both the pressure difference between the phases and the saturation. Often it's much easier to just look at the endpoints. So an example here is, imagine we're here, we're at residual saturation. We can dunk, basically, we can put the rock in a bath of oil, how much oil imbibes measure the saturation. We can do this simply by weighing the rock. Then what we do is we inject oil, we go back to our initial saturation. Then we put it in a bath of water, we go to here, and then we inject water and we go to here. So we only actually measure the endpoints. We measure this point, this point, this point, and this point. So that's a lot easier to do because it just involves basically weighing a piece of rock when it's surrounded by one phase, seeing the change in weight, which we can convert to saturation, and then getting a pump and pumping it in and seeing the change. So when we do this, we get what are called the AMOT wettability indices. And they're defined as, as follows. There's a water index, I for index here. Okay. And the water index is defined by how much spontaneous imbibition is there compared to the total displacement. So the change in saturation from spontaneous imbibition is SW star minus where we started, SWC. And the total change is one minus SOR minus SWC. And that has a value between zero and one. If we have an oil wet rock, there's no spontaneous imbibition, everything's negative, IW is zero. If we have a strongly water wet rock, it's all spontaneous imbibition, no forced imbibition, and IW is one. We can do the same for oil. Oil is now the change here, one minus SOR minus SWD, we call it here, over the same change. Here, if we have any spontaneous imbibition of oil, this will be a positive number. If in fact it's more water wet and we see no spontaneous imbibition, this will be zero. So these two indices give us an indication of the type of behavior. If both of those are positive, we imbibe both oil and water, this can only be explained by a mixed wet rock, right? We have both oil wet and water wet regions of the pore space. If both of these indices are near zero, we have a rock with contact angles around 90 degrees. Basically, everything looks non-wetting to one phase or the other. If we have a water index of about one, an oil index of zero, it's water wet. If we have an oil index that is quite large and a water index that's zero, so no spontaneous imbibition, it's clearly an oil wet rock. So we can characterize the rocks this way. What I don't recommend, and in fact, I so don't recommend it, I'm not even going to write it down, is sometimes people have an amot harvey index where they take one index from the other. They look at the difference between the indexes. Do not do this. And the reason is because you remove information. You can't distinguish between a rock that's neutrally wet, where both indices are zero, and one where you're imbibing both oil and water, where also the index is close to zero. Okay? So in this case, we can see the water index, okay, we've got a little bit more spontaneous imbibition than spontaneous oil imbibition. So the water index here is about 50%, this is about 30%. Okay? And you need to consider both, it's a mixed wet rock. Okay, so that was a very brief introduction to capillary pressure as a function of saturation and an idea of this displacement cycles, primary drainage, spontaneous imbibition of water, forced water injection, and then you can do this experimentally, 
doesn't necessarily happen in reality, but it does actually say for an air water system in the water table, right? Things move up and down, up and down, up and down. So this is the oil spontaneously imbibing and then being pushed into the rock and you get a cycle. And those, these capillary pressure functions are hysteretic. That is, they are different for different flow directions and they're different because the wettability can change. We have rough surfaces, we have chemical heterogeneity, we have contact angle hysteresis as a result, but we also have different displacement processes, snap-off, piston-like advance, cooperative pore filling that are distinct for the different displacement processes. So we always see hysteresis. And then we have these indices that allow us to quantify the wettability from actually relatively straightforward displacement experiments. So thank you very much.